11 1 and hope that you're doing great. Now, today we're looking at this 2023 BJC Paper 2 for Health Science. Please remember, for you start the examination, you should write the school number, your candidate number, your name and initials, also your surname. It is also important for you to read through the instructions carefully before you start the examination. And if you should have any questions or queries, you refer to your examiner before the examination begins. Let us jump into question number one. Question number one reads that the diagram below show four main systems in the human body. Use them to help you answer the questions below. And so I have already labeled the system or systems. So we have W being the digestive system, X being the skeleton system, Y is the breathing or respiratory system, and Z is the nervous system. So the first part of the question asks us to define the term system. And a system is a group of organs working together to carry out a specific function. For part B, it's a name of the body systems represented by the letters W, X, and Y. And so as we labeled, W is the digestive. X is a skeletal or skeleton system. And Y is the respiratory or breathing system. Now for part C, it's a state of function of the body systems X and Y, and X is a skeletal which has many functions. And so some of these functions include support movement, gives shape, protects internal organs, and also to produce blood cells. And for Y, which is the breathing system or respiratory system, what it does is to supply the body with oxygen and removes carbon dioxide. And for part D, and D1 particularly, is that living things have the ability to respond to changes in the environment. This characteristic is called ir irritability. It's a name the body system which responds to changes in the environment. And this system is a nervous system. And a point to note that the changes within the environment, those changes are called stimuli. Now, the part two of D is that what is the main organ found in the body system named in part D1? And that main organ is the brain. Now, for E, it's a name two body systems shown above, which work together to produce the energy the body needs. And so the two systems that work together to produce energy are the digestive system and the breathing system. Now, how they work is that the digestive system supplies glucose or breakdown or carbohydrates into glucose. And the breathing system will produce oxygen. And remember, for respiration is glucose react with oxygen and you get energy, carbon dioxide and water. So you should also know the equation for respiration, especially aerobic respiration. Now for question number two, we say diagrams below represent specialized cells found in the human body. Again, I have already labeled. So cell X is a muscle cell. And then we have cell Y, which is a red blood cell. And then cell Z, it is a nerve cell or neuron as we know it. But to be specific, this is a motor neuron. How we know this is a motor neuron? The cell body is at the end, okay? If the cell body was at the side, then that would be a sensory. And if the cell body is in the middle, like in the dead center and the, and the dendrites and nerve endings and the opposite ends, then we know that would be a relay neuron. All right, so for part A now, it's a name the specialized cells labeled X and Y, as we, are, we have already labeled those. So Y is the red blood cells. Z is the nerve cell or neuron. And the function of the red blood cell is to transport oxygen. And the function of the nerve cell is to transmit impulses. For B, it's a why does the body have specialized cell? And the purpose for having specialized cell is to carry out specific functions. So for example, the cells in your muscles, they are for movement, all right? The cells in your endocrine glands, those will help to secrete hormones, all right? The cells in, in your ear, those will help you with hearing. 
and the cells in your tongue will help you for taste, all right? So definitely different cells have different functions, all right? So part C now, C1 particularly, is the name structure labeled S on cell Z and states its function. And if you go back to structure Z or cell Z and the structure here is S, then that would be the dendrites. And the function of dendrites is to receive or pick up impulses. All right, so dendrites always receive the impulse. And then for D now, it's a which of the specialized cells shown in the, diagram above, in the diagrams above does not contain a nucleus. And we know that is the red blood cells or, or cell Y. All right. For part two of D, it said, why is there no nucleus present in this cell? And one of the main reasons is to create more space to transport oxygen or for the transportation of oxygen. And for part E, last part of this question, it said, what is the form, what is formed actually when similar cells are joined together and that is a tissue. So once you have cells combined, you get a tissue. And have tissue combined, you get organs, all right? And then organs come together to give you organ system. And then system work together and build up what they call the organism. All right, for question number three. It says, the diagrams below show the, type, the types of teeth in the lower jaw of the mouth and the structure of a tooth. All right, and so I have labeled these. We give you also the numbers of each type of um, tooth that is present there. And so we have the incisor, and we have eight of those. We have canine, we have four of those in total. We have premolars, we have eight of those in total. All right, um, let me just remove this S. No, S is supposed to be right there. All right, so premolar. All right, good. And then we have our molar, all right? And then we have this tooth that is shown over here. Um, we have the structure here, um, O, which is the NML. Um, here is the dentine, and then we have... Here we have the nerve. So structure P is pointed to the nerve, but the nerve is found in the pulp, all right? And also blood vessels or capillaries are found in the pulp cavity as well. All right, let's go to the first part of the question. Is identify the set of teeth shown in figure one and give a reason for your answer. And so this is the permanent set of teeth. All right, permanent set. And the reason for that is because we have um, 16 teeth are shown, which is half of a full set. So which, whichever, if this is, well, this is the lower part of the jaw, because you can see the tongue, right? So this is the lower part of the mouth, and there are 16 um, teeth in total. And so this person would have 32, and 32 is the full number of teeth for an adult, which is the permanent um, teeth. All right, so definitely. All right, for part B, it's a completed table below by filling in the blank spaces. And so we have L. Um, they gave us this, which is K9, and K9 is used for tearing of food. And then M, as we go back on the diagram, M will be your incisors. Notice they shape like chisel. All right, and incisors are used for cutting of food. Then let's go back to K9 a little bit. K9, they are very pointy. All right, so K9, they are pointy teeth. And then we have our N, which are molar. Those are closer to the back. All right, so there's the last set of three on each side. Um, those are the molar. All right, and the molar, they're similar to premolar. They look alike, you know, only that they're a little bigger. All right, and so those are for crushing and grinding of food. Now for part C, it said in figure two, structure P shows a type of tissue that transmit, just transmits messages to the brain when you eat a frozen popsicle. Give the name of this tissue. And again, P in the tooth will be nerves. All right, so though that are nerve endings or nerves. All right, and again, they help to transmit the impulse. Um, either frozen popsicle, you feel a cramp, is because of the nerves that send messages to your brain. All right, part D, it said, what is the name of, the, of a tough, hard substance that covers the tooth, and that is called enamel? All right, and then here, part two, it said, give the name of a chemical substance that will erode or cause damage to the covering named in D1. And so what could erode or damage the enamel is really acids. All right, so acids is a chemical substance that will damage the enamel. All right. And for part three, it's a state one way. 
to care for your teeth. And there are many different ways you can do one that you should do daily, at least more than once, three times at least, is to brush your teeth regularly. Flossing is important as well, to floss it in between your, in between your teeth to remove those extra food that the toothbrush may not be able to reach or remove effectively. Visit the dentist regularly. Well, at least they say once or twice a year to get your checkup and also to clean your teeth as well. All right, question number four. He said, Mary purchases, purchased a sandwich, a sandwich combo for her lunch at a restaurant. The sandwich contained the following food and their energy values are shown in the table below. So you can observe the table. I'll just run through it real quick. We have two slices of, of brown bread that is 760 kilojoules of energy. We have one teaspoon of mayonnaise, and that is 354 kilojoules of energy. We have three slices of ham, and that is 783 kilojoules of energy. We have two leaves of lettuce, that is 35 kilojoules of energy. We have one slice of tomato, that is 43 kilojoules of energy. We have one apple, and that is 410 kilojoules of energy. We have milk, which equals to 820 kilojoules of energy. And the axis here for the total, and total let's add up everything. All right, and once you add up everything, you get 3,205 kilojoules of energy in total. And that is actually for A part one. Now for part two, he said, if three slices of ham in Mary's lunch provides 783 kilojoules of energy, what will be the energy value for one slice? And all you need to do is to divide this um, 783 by three, and what you get here is 261 kilojoules of energy, all right? And then for part B now, he said, which food would be the best source of each of the following nutrients in Mary's lunch? And so for carbohydrates, you get um, eat, uh, what will produce a lot of carbohydrate is the bread. Um, even though it's a brown bread, it still pro pro uh, provide you with carbohydrates. And um, protein, you get that from the milk or the ham. Now, there's a reason why I put milk in red, because that would be your main answer based upon part two. Because part two asks us here, which food listed above would supply Mary with the most calcium? And so when they say above, they didn't specify whether or not it's in a table or from this question. But I guess it is stating right here, all right? Because um, if, it's, if it's in part um, B1, then milk would be the answer. Well, milk would only be the answer anyhow for part two, all right? Because milk is what produ providing the calcium. But you can get the protein from ham or the milk, all right? Just to make a note of that. All right, so uh, for part three, it's a name the deficiency disease caused by a lack of calcium in the diet, and that will be rickets, all right? And this for part four, it said, which food contained in the sandwich would help to prevent constipation? And you're looking here for anything that contain a high level of fiber, and so the answer here will be lettuce. All right, lettuce is rich in fiber. As a matter of fact, all plant materials are generally good in fiber. Now, it's a state the importance of the nutrient protein in the body, and protein is for growth and development, all right? And how it provides you with growth and development or help with growth and development is really by building and repairing cells. So you help to make cells and repair cells to help with growth and development. Last part of this question is that explain why Mary's sandwich is considered a balanced diet and the reason why it's considered a balanced diet is because it simply contains all the right nutrients in the correct proportions. All right? And we're just assuming that based on the values that we see in the chart. Now, for question number five, we say the diagram shows, the diagram below shows the structures of the human ear. It says, use it to help you answer the questions below. And again, I have, I have already labeled this. So you have the pinna, semicircular canal, you have the artery nerve, you have a cochlea, and you have a eustachian tube right here. All right, and so again, it's a name, the parts of the air labeled H, I, and K. And of course, H is pinna, semicircular canal for I, and K is the auditory nerve. And for part B, it said, identify the parts of the air responsible for balance, and balance is, um, which part is responsible for balance is the semicircular canal. And for trapping sound waves is really the pinna. The, the pinna receives and captures sound waves. Converting sound waves into impulses, and that is the cochlea. All right. And for C, it said, what is the name of the smallest bones in the air? And that is the air ossicles. All right. And the common name for the air ossicles in terms of order 
you have a hammer, anvil, and stirrup. All right, they are also called malleus incus and stapes. You can also know those names as well. All right, for part D, is a what type of tissue is the pinna, the pinna or the ear lobe made of, and that is cartilage. Now, for part E, is a state why sharp objects should not be should not be placed into the air, and it's simple because sharp objects could damage the eardrum, all right, or puncture the eardrum actually. Now, for part F, which is the last part of the question, any diagram draw a line to the structure that that equalizes air pressure in the air, label the line L. And that is the U station tube. And that is, we label that L right there. So the U station tube is that structure, okay? Final question. It says the diagram below shows the endocrine system. And again, I have already labeled. So up here in the brain, you have the pituitary gland, you have a thyroid gland in your throat. You have the adrenal gland rests on top of the kidneys. And we have our pancreas, um, ovaries for female, testes or testes for singular for the male. All right, this is a diagram that's showing you for both male and female together. Um, you do not have both of them in any one person. All right, for part A, it said part A1. It said, and the diagram place the letter X on the gland that produces the female sex hormone. Are hormones and that is the ovary and so I labeled well I put the X over that one all right um, and what you could have done is use a line and put the X on the outside guys on the diagram place a letter X well let's put it on the, on the structure it, do, it doesn't matter really all right so you have followed the instructions there on the diagram so you draw the X on the diagram that makes sense all right for part two it's a name the gland responsible for for secreting female sex hormones and that again is the ovary and for part B1, is a defined puberty. And puberty is the age at which a person is capable of reproducing or producing gametes. For part two, is to identify two secondary sexual characteristics common to both males and females. And that would be the production of gametes, otherwise called sex cells, and also growth of pubic hair. So both male and females, they experience these two things at puberty. A part C is that Peter was walking home when he was approached by a stray animal. He ran to escape from being attacked by the animal. Part 1 is a given name of the hormone which would help him to escape, and that is adrenaline. All right, and in part 2 is a name, the gland that produces this hormone, and this is the adrenal gland. All right, for part D, it's that Dora has been urinating often, lacks energy, is feeling tired and weak. When her urine was tested, glucose was found in her urine. State the name of the disease Dora is most likely have um, likely to have, and that is diabetes. All right, and it's a which of her gland was not working properly, and that is the pancreas. And name the hormone secreted by the gland, name in E2, and that is insulin. All right, because insulin is responsible to control your blood sh um, sugar level or your blood or your blood glucose level. All right, at this point, I want to thank you for watching. And also, I want to wish you luck on the examination. Take care, and we'll talk again.